As you all know, hey, we are live. Oh, hey, I'm playing a little hey. mistake today. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I know, yes, because I don't have my speaker. Yeah. No, we we gonna get a little mistake going. Can y'all hear it? Yes. Yeah. This is the vibe, y'all. Come on and give me a vibe, girl. That's he's, cool. he's naming all the dope black women. And yeah. y'all gotta see his music video for this song. I would I gotta check that one out. Um, what's the name of the queen, song? It's called Queen Tink. Eh, well, yes. eh, she my queen. Hey. Yeah. Hey, I'm with it. Hey, welcome to the sip, y'all. Hey. Come through, come through, come through. Hey. Hey. Happy Friday, y'all. Happy um, Friday. Free. <laughs> Who's uh, There we are. There we are. Okay. Let's go and start this watch party. Let's start this watch party. Yeah. yeah. How's everybody? Party. How is everybody? We gonna wait yeah. for some folks to come hey, in. Where are y'all? Absolutely. Yeah. It's been so. trash. Like Lord knows. I've been feeling I, it's been a good week, like in terms of of, I feel like I feel good about myself, but mm -hmm. I don't feel good about what's happening with the state of the world. And it's such a ju juxtaposition because it's like, yes. on the one hand, I feel like all this Corona time has made me think a lot, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, about what I want and what I don't want and all that kind of stuff. But the world, man, when you turn on the news, yo, it's crazy. It's crazy. doing too much. I'm grateful to be here with my girl. Doing too much. <laughs> like it's a lot this it week is. personally for me yeah. i've had some struggles this week y'all yeah I've had, I've, yeah i've had mm -hmm. some emotional struggles i mean i was on my period so y'all know Shit. What I get that that. Does. but even i just yeah. feel like um it's a constant like ebb and flow of, of emotions it's right. like you know one day i'm feeling amazing mm -hmm. and then the next day it's like Hmm? Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And that stuff can make you feel crazy, man. Yeah. You know? <sighs> when it goes like that. Yeah. Absolutely. But I feel better today. And I just mm -hmm. think, you know, what we always are talking about is just practicing kindness and gracious and love for ourselves and patience during this time because yeah. we are all trying to do our best to figure this out on a daily basis. A daily basis, not That's a right. weekly, not a monthly. A oh, daily basis, really so, hour by hour, yes, hour by hour. Hour by hour. Mm -hmm. and I think it's great that you know. Hey, Kobe, sister, somebody just oh, hey, hey, that's my cousin. Hey, hey. But I'm happy to see y'all beautiful in, faces. You, I'm you too, you, honey. You too, girl. How's everybody else feeling today? Yes. Hey, Lindsay, what's up, boo? Hey, Lindsay. What's what's I going? Hey. Listen, I got my Jamaican <laughs> homie on today, Ruby Johnson. So we going in. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <go. laughs> I always wish that I could be hey. like, Jamaican or something. Just have like you know. That would be so dope to say. <laughs> I do too, too. I need some cool. But you got okay. that southern, like y'all, you know, rise you that you got that mid that Midwestern, like girl you know, vibe. Vibe. What? That's what? Cool. That's, That's cool. real. I mean, That's it real. is, but that is so so feel as cultured as. Being I mean, you know, it's, not as, it's not as dope. As it's, not. Like, it's not as dope. It's just not. Ride you in the car. What you got going on today, sis? Ma'am, I have too much going on today. This is, this is you know. I'm grateful though, because I'm, yes. I'm grateful to be a working musician. I am doing a jazz cabaret show tonight, literally in about an hour or so at the Vintage Cabaret um, in Aurora. It's going to be yes. a live streaming show. It's free. It's going to be on YouTube. 
And it's myself, Leonard Barrett Jr., who's a well-known uh, theater singer here in Denver, and my good, good friend, Randy Chalmers, who is also an amazing actor and singer, um, and Trent Hines. And so we're just literally going to do some jazz tunes and some cabaret for y'all. Yeah. Uh, just kind of mellow out the Friday afternoon. So I'm so excited. How can people yeah. find it? Yes. Um, I'm going to post it. It'll be on my page. It's going to be on YouTube. The link is already up. Oh, so okay. I shared it and I shared it. I shared an event page on my Raj Delari music page as well. All right, y'all. So go check oh, out Miss Raj Delari. All right, fam. Yes. Get you that bath today. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. So we, yeah. Here we are. And we got another dope sister in power in the building today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, Carrie, would you like to introduce our special guest for the day? I would be honored. I would be yes. honored. Yeah. All right, y'all. So, Rue Johnson is a consultant, executive producer, and nightlife operations strategist. Owner at Rue Black Consulting, Rue specializes in taking clients from point A to B, idea to execution with precision, grace, style, and substance. Having worked in the music industry with background in politics and capacity building, Johnson believes art is the revolution and our very living in the resistance. Rue Black creates platforms of expression for hip hop artists and other indies across the music spectrum, amplifying the voices of those not traditionally heard in the creative process. We produce large volume events for Red Bull Sound Select, the National Cannabis Festival, Broccoli City, and others with brand awareness fulfillment. On a political level, Rue Black has written model ordinances for cannabis equity licenses on the West Coast while maintaining a finger on the, a finger on the pulse of change in cities like Denver and Washington, D.C. I would love oh. to introduce y'all to the one, the only, the fabulous Rue Johnson fam. Let's give it hey. up. Hey. What's up, Gwen? Let's go. Well, hello. Welcome. Hello. Thank How you. are you? I am so good. I'm so excited to be here and you know to be chopping it up with y'all. I just um I was joking to Carrie Joy um earlier this week that this is gonna be like an episode of two two seven. Like yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Yeah, yes. yes. I love it. Thank you for having me. Of yeah, course. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. So, yo, let's let's get down to the nitty gritty. First of all, what we drinking? What we drinking? Well, I'm drinking the same thing I drank last right. week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't had time to run to the store. So got that little coat. Got that little coat. Little, little, little Grand Marnier. Little Grand Marnier. Mm. Um, I'm having a uh, Corona Heart Seltzer. Oh, okay. You know? Yes. Yes. I should make yes. a check for this oh, product, yeah. but. But I love, I love it. It's a, it's a nice, you know, nice summertime drink when you can kind of keep flowing throughout the day and you know keep the conversation going. You drink like ten of them, you'll be turned up for sure. Honey, okay, <laughs> <laughs> to be in turn. Yes, you need to be turned today. Raj, I know you got a gig. What you sipping on? Just went in the palate. What you doing? I know. I wish I could be turned with y'all. I'm having a nice little caramel uh, coconut little milkshake. I don't even <laughs> need to well, it's not really dairy, so it's okay for me to drink before I sing. <laughs> but right. yeah, I wish I could be having an alcohol drink with y'all, because I would be turned up too. But you about to turn up after your gig though, so it's all good. Listen. <laughs> <We're> right there. <laughs> you already know. All right, fam. So so dope. I got, got a it. question of the day. Okay, what's the question of the day? Um, it's kind of a spin off a question I heard right. earlier, right? So sometimes we ask, like, if there was somebody that you could bring back, like, that's an ancestor. Um, but I wanted to, I want to talk about like people that are still alive right now because I think it's important that we know who our heroes are today and the people that we love today. Um, if there was anybody that you could just invite to, you know, to a adult table to have a beautiful conversation about life and goodness or whatever that's alive right now, who would it be? Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go first. Okay. I'll go first. Um, I would love to sit down with Ava DuVernay. Yeah. Mm. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, yes. think she, I think she is incredible, amazing. I think the way that she sees people, are, especially our people of color, is amazing. The way that she tells stories is incredible. Yeah. Of course, I would love to ever be considered for one of her films. 
Y'all heard that, Ava? But um, but I think she, I bet she, huh? Right? But I bet she has. I would love to hear her stories behind the scenes of a lot of some of the amazing shows she's done. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Shout out to Ava. Love Shout it. Who? You know, I don't even know. <laughs> I think I have one. I was gonna say it's your question. So I know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I own it. <laughs> I own it. Hilarious. I got one. Who that? So I mean, I really have okay. two because I'm I like as a musician, I have one for music, but then just one for being right. a black woman would be Angela Bassett. Mm, yes. yes. So, I see. Yeah. Yes. I yes. would love to sit down and talk to that woman. After okay. that speech she gave, well, before that, mm -hmm. but after that speech she gave at Black Girls Rock last year, honey, yes. Auntie Angela yes. can cool me any time of the day. And mm -hmm. I love her to pieces, and mm -hmm. I would love to have a conversation with her. Yeah. All day, every day. Gotcha. That's real. That's real. Mm -hmm. I got my, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it would have to be a soda. Mm, it, would have, yeah. it would have to be a soda. You know, she's living her best life out there in Cuba right now. In Cuba, yeah. And I'm just like, I've always said I want to go to Cuba and just kind of sit at her feet and just talk. You know what I'm saying? Just wrap it up and hear all the wisdom that she would love to bestow upon the people. So, Asada Shakur, right. Actually, mine was also a Sada Shakur. Yeah. Which is yeah. <laughs> because, <laughs> and because, you know, it, we're in that same mindset, you know, there's so many opportunities to talk to like it, that. That question is so broad that it could be anybody. But that was the first person that came to mind because so many leaders that we have right now um, are, are doing the work. But I feel like Asada just brings that energy of by any means truly truly necessary mm -hmm. you know and 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 also the idea of the fact that we're all fighting for in a lot of ways our own self supremacy and i feel like she represents the the act of you know saving yourself mm -hmm. and being a part of the movement so yeah same and i i hope that at some point you know that that comes together cuz she's just amazing i feel like would tell us everything we need to know about the movement right now and what we need to do, you know. Right. So when we go to Cuba. Right. That's right. Shout out to all those queens. I have never heard that phrase self supremacy before. And I could imagine that 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 resonated deeply with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I use I feel like I've I've heard the term I've I've used it myself a lot to really amplify for myself in times where it was up to me to choose myself for the saving um mm. and, and up to me to choose yeah. myself for the like living that. you know mm. yes. uh, so I'm like, okay so how do i how do i decide what it means to be you know the most supreme rue or to mm. live at Ooh. my highest level? or what does I it mean that. to choose my own politics first yes. by, by any means and no matter what so yeah that that self-supremacy is 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 so key especially during you know these times of you know social uprising and change right yeah. that's yeah. real the most supreme I rule that. i'm here with that so i love that do it. yeah yeah where where so Ru, let's talk about you a little bit more what do you want okay what do you want to know <laughs> <laughs> i got some questions well I, first of all, I just wanted to kind of open it up for you a little bit to, to tell the world about who you are um your work like how you got into production and consulting so just just tell us tell us about you so who I am, right, is, um, you know, I'm, I'm a person who's made up of, um, you know, reflections and memories and, you know, abstract concepts and sunrises and, mm. you know, charisma and honey brown sugar and, you yes. know, jokes and, yes. you, know, I, you know, I'm the, I'm the yes. sum of all the black women who come before me. I am my mother's daughter. I am my great grandmother's, you know, legacy. Um, and and I, I guess when I think of that, when I think of the question of who am I, that's where I go to, I think particularly because of how much um, my life has really been a series of serendipitous occasions. And were it not for like the clear ancestral hand on my life, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like so many of the things that people tout as my accomplishments or the things that I myself um, 
tout as my accomplishments wouldn't be possible if it wasn't from all the other women who put me in these positions or mm -hmm. the fact that my mother like yeah. must have known that I was going to be you know typing a lot because she had me take typing classes when I was like five you know what I mean like, yeah. like how did she know? Right. You know what I mean I think about when I was a child and I would she would pass me her books and she would read bc andrews flowers in the attic and then she would give it to mm. me you know yes. i was like how did you know that yes. i mean so that is who i am you know that's who i am is i'm a collection oh of these experiences that have made me this person um but what i do and which also has really become a part of who i am is you know i'm a person who loves culture and who loves art and who loves community and who loves black culture art and community and um, yeah. what I found is during, you know, my political, my background is in politics. Um, I'm from New York City. I sort of cut my teeth by working for a lot of like city council people and state reps who were really making strides for black politicians during that time. Mm -hmm. And I found that I got really good at noticing how to hear people and listen to them and then find them mm -hmm. where they are and take them to the next level. And so, um, I got really good at running campaigns and I was offered an opportunity to move out to Colorado, like a place that I had never been before, you know? Um, <laughs> like, I think that my family still probably thinks that there's like no horses and <laughs> you know, there was no experience, there was like no experience around Colorado, but I moved yeah. here um, to work on political campaigns and I've always been someone who's been involved in the music industry and I come from a long line of women who worked in the music industry on lots of different levels. And so as my political work transitioned, I realized that I can apply the same principles of running and winning campaigns as I can to working with independent artists who weren't necessarily given a chance, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So let's treat yeah. every one of y'all like Barack Obama. It's the you same know? thing. That's and real. Yes. And I was like, well, where do I start? Like, how do I, how do I get the power? You know, I'm a girl from New York City. No one really knew me necessarily. I was the new girl in town. I didn't really have any power or clout or anything that would be useful, but I'm a writer. And I started writing about artists that I thought were important and that I thought were dynamic and had a voice in town. And it caught the eye of the music editors at Westward Newspaper. And so they brought me on to start writing about hip hop and to kind of get into these spaces um, that they weren't privy to because this is also a culture, right? It's not just about like, oh, let me go write about this band. It's like, how are you part of the culture? And from there, you know, I, I, I realized that just like systemic racism and other things and other industries that this also exists in the communities like people treat hip-hop like we are you know like most deaf said we're a beast off in the hillside like you know whenever mm -hmm. learn yeah. about you know this culture that we have and as a result of that many artists are missing out on opportunities like shows and performances and mm -hmm. PR and grants and you know yeah. city that respect the art, the arts, but they don't know shit about what we're doing, right? Right, right. So that's how we right. were born. They like that nonprofit hip hop. They like Money. that <laughs> <laughs> they like like nonprofit hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and when I say mm. nonprofit hip hop, you know, I think some people kind of get a little miffed by that, but I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm talking exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah. Nonprofit hip hop. You know the safe mm. ones, the ones who the like say yeah. around, you know, we all we all speak in Shakespearean iambic pants. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Often, you know, I'm like, they deserve the right, we all deserve the right. So Rue Black was born out of a need of creating a space for um, people, places, and things whose voices need to be amplified. And I was taking this content into Westward and then later my work at the Denver Post, and they were looking at me like I was, you know, running Showtime at the Apollo. They were hey. like, oh, this is, you know, we've never seen this before. I'm like, what do you mean you've never seen this before? These people live here, you know? Right. You know, we're looking. <laughs> like, what do you mean? So, um, that's kind of how the consulting work then began, was I sort of made these, connections and then I realized if we can do this with the artists then we can 
ask for a stronger corporate mm -hmm. social responsibility from agencies like AEG and Live Nation and others that have the power to make this happen. And, you know, right. luckily they, they believed in me and trusted me and, you know, cut the check for me and my friends. And, you know, right. and, and that's what we were able to do. And I, I love um, I love Denver, so a lot of my work has remained here, even as I've sort of grown in other cities as well. But Denver is always the place that, you know, really gave me an opportunity to try some of these crazy ideas um, for artists who I love and respect. So I sick. love that. Yeah. I love that. Woo. Thank you for breaking that down. Yes. I, you know what I was... I know that you're just so knowledgeable about about the hip hop scene and what's going on in our culture. Um, and so, you know, I kind of wanted to get into Monique, if you don't mind, I wanted to get into the, 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 the conversation about Mr. Cannon. Honey, and kind of see where everybody was at, because I know Raj, you got a balance, and I want to I want to dive into this because wow. <laughs> uh, I got one. I know, I know, right? Right? That was <laughs> That was definitely a topic that I knew we wanted to discuss today. And then I saw your post Girl. earlier, <laughs> which I think we should read, no, honey. Read it. We, yes, please, because I had went and reread it again just a second ago. I think it's worthy. Mm -hmm. of, it's of worthy. It is worthy, Drew. <laughs> it is <laughs> worthy. Like, I, I'm the fuck off this, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> read that. Read it, uh, Karen. Okay, 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 okay. So wait, while while I'm looking for it, since you want to just like tell the tell the crowd uh, what happened. Right. Yes. Yeah, so Happy. this what? week, Mr. Genius Nick Cannon himself got dropped by Viacom, who CBS, who he's had a over 20 year relationship with. He's you know done some really incredible things for the network. Um, his huge show Wild and Out, uh, which has been on since I was like in college. Um, yeah. you know, took off and he's just, he's a king. Well, he has a podcast and he made some alleged uh, anti-Semitic comments according to these other people and Viacom dropped him. And so he's basically trying to get the rights to Wild and Out, which is devastating right. because that show was brilliant. And yes. the fact that like- Oh, wow. All, I didn't know that part. Oh, yes, honey. All the work right. that he has put in over the years to make that show what it is. And now he's got to fight for mm -hmm. the right to own what was his. Right. And so, yes, Carrie. <sighs> and I was stressed. I was stressed. I was like, I don't know yes. how to kind of like this. Like, what, the, what, what, what are we doing? And so what are we this doing? is what I said. Um, on Twitter and Instagram and stuff, I was like, this Nick Cannon situation has me heated. Listen, motherfuckers, Jews are black. Let's start right there. Yeah. The fact that we believe the narrative that Jews are a white minority is the fucking problem. The anti-blackness within the Jewish religion and culture, right. and people see it as a religion, but we could you know, talk about that. The, the anti-blackness within that culture is the problem. So start there. Right. This is like believing that Australians equal whiteness or Americans equal whiteness. Mm. Yes, Jews have been persecuted, but amongst them are black and brown Jews that have somehow been whitewashed throughout history as well. Like Jesus. Y'all remember that guy? <laughs> I swear. And then I said, I swear 2,000 years from mm. now, some racist motherfucker is going to be idolizing the picture of a blonde hair, blue eyed um, MLK Jr. Because Ooh! the way that this white supremacy shit is set up is the most toxic backwards oh. bullshit I have ever witnessed like what the entire time. And, and that's, listen, and like, it, it, I'm just like, listen fam, I need you to know your history. I need you to understand where you come from as a people. Like, and the fact that, the fact that, I, I was even talking to one of my homies today. He's a, he's a Jewish, new, um, Jewish dude that uh, owns a nonprofit out here, Warm Cookies of the Revolution. That's a homie. Um, Evan, and so we were talking a little bit today about this situation, and so you know, we were just having that conversation about anti blackness and how, um, there are people that consider themselves as white, like Tana Hisi Coates said, um, mm -hmm. that, come in, that come to America, right, and find themselves aligning with whiteness because they can, right? So, when you look mm -hmm. at you, when you look at people, um, that right. came to America, like, like Jews that have lighter skin or right. Italians or the Irish, or whatever right. the case might be. Like, y'all were persecuted against too because of white supremacy. Right. Damn, anti-blackness exists in every single every. culture because blackness, we birth life. 
Shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can we have that conversation? So right. all I'm saying at the end of the right. day is like, we need to start addressing, and this is what I feel like Nick Cannon was trying to do, was trying to ask the Jewish community to hold themselves accountable to the yes. anti-blackness that exists in your community first and foremost. And then y'all want to come out and use that same power that you align with, with whiteness to, to, to take his job, for real? Take his job. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's that's and silence him and yeah. silence and the silence yeah. him, you know that part. That's the that's the part that I feel like is almost so so much of a slap in you the know, because, you know if, if I may go next. Um what I what I personally feel is that we need to build our own institutions. We have so that to we don't yeah. get canceled over things like this. You need to have your own because if any kind of corporation can come along and you know, and and make you lose your job over something that you said. Now, listen, there are some people who deserve to be canceled. You saying racist stuff on air, newscasters, you deserve to be canceled. Right, right, right. This right, is right. not that. No. But no. but I do believe that ultimately we need to own our own networks and do our own thing. Like that if, if Nick Cannon had built, and this is not against him, but if he had built Wild and Out on his own network, you know what I mean? Doing his yeah. own show, he wouldn't have to answer to nobody. He could say whatever he needed he could to say, say, whatever, and either clean it up or do whatever. But he'd be under his own brand and his own power. Yeah. So That's I say, wanted. own own your shit, so so nobody can tell you nothing and nobody can kill okay, you. Okay, nobody exactly. Right, right. And I was shocked to hear that he didn't own Wild and Out. Me too. Same. I was me too. I was like, like what? what? <laughs> yeah. Right. I was shocked. But it told me that wasn't his show. That's real. Completely yeah. shocked. Completely shocked. And I think that speaks to right. you know further to what um right. Raj is saying is that we have to own our own. We have to own all the whole the whole jig. You know, there's no yeah. there's no reason why now you know no one's gonna watch Wild and Out without Nick Cannon or right. like you said, this is how history gets revised and whitewashed and you know the person who created it completely you know pushed out so yeah right. I agree. we need to have our own platforms absolutely. everything yeah and i don't need the black community to not come for him for for apologizing right now you know because because that i don't part. feel like i don't feel like he walked back anything that he said right he i did feel it. like he he made it very clear that he was right. just like if i cause any harm I apologize for that, right? But I'm right. asking you to be held accountable. That's you know right. what I'm saying? And there is right. nothing wrong with that. That's not anti-Semitic, that's right. anti-racist. <laughs> All of us should be anti-racist. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. So like y'all need to get it together too, because I'm coming for him, for real. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's really maddening. And then he put a post up on his Instagram just saying, and y'all calling me a coon for selling out, or y'all calling me a sellout because I apologize. But he's like, I basically can't make nobody happy. And under his location, he put heaven. So people mm. were like, let's pray for this brother yes. because, you know, this type of onslaught of yeah. from the media can really damage some folks. It's so it's I'm it's praying it's that he can. I, I also think that there's so much like, you know, in, in the black community, there's a lot of division around like people who support Farrakhan and, you know, which a lot of where his, I guess, leanings and teachings came from or yeah. the where the conversation kind of originated. And, you know, I'm not, I guess his, Nick Cannon originally had the conversation with Professor Griff, who mm -hmm. is not someone whose politics I necessarily, you know, align myself with, right. because, you know, whatever. But, but I also feel like there is a way to understand where he's coming from without, you know, completely, uh, you know, throwing him under the bus, you know, or, or, or like, um, you know, like Terry's also from New York. So you understand, we all remember getting yelled at by those Hebrew Israelites on the corner. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it, it, it's from New York or like whatever, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, that's, that's what you, right, right, right. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they holler and scream and they're like, and, and, and the black people and, and the, you know, and the Southern Asians, y'all know, we all remember that. So. It's, it, there is still something, there is still medicine in, in what he's saying, you know, and I think, I agree. you know, Absolutely. It, we should definitely still take a look at that. But I, I also think that black people sometimes uh, don't have all of, it's hard to see past the, the presentation of it, you know? Right. Yeah. That's super real. That's super real. So I I feel like we need to really be sending some prayers and support up to, to Nick right now. Just because because I feel like, you know, he he, he lost his job and he was betrayed by every damn body. And like, you know, I, I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine myself in that situation right now. So I just want to make sure he knows like, yo, fam, 
I hope you're good. I have some love your way. I hope you feel some positive energy and feel upheld right now. So, because yeah, yeah, Nick yeah. has been a boss. He has. Nick has yeah. been a boss. Like, people try to play him because he comes from Nickelodeon. I'm just like, I but like, that with that. Nickelodeon I'm saying, I'm like, long and strong. Exactly. <laughs> right. He has, he's brilliant. He has created <laughs> so much dope content. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yes. it's. Oh, I just feel for him. I feel right. for him. And uh, I really hope he can stay strong through all this. Yeah, that's real. While we're so. on the subject of this, I did. It's been, you know, we haven't been doing a BAN of the week every week. We did one last week. But I got a BAN this week, y'all. Who it is? Who it is? <laughs> for what I think it stands for. It stands for exactly what you think. Listen, go in, honey. <laughs> Do we you need a definition? I mean, no. if you want to break it, oh, we good? Okay. Good. Okay, we good. Okay. B period, A period, N period. <laughs> Who it is? <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to even have to say this, but it just needs to be said because somebody came for the Queen Jill Scott and what you will not do. What you and I got to do. What yeah. you not finna no, do. What you not. No, it's what yeah. you're not gonna do. You're not gonna come for the Dude. queen. No, ma'am. Touch, touch not mine anointed. Don't let me post scripture. <laughs> Don't let me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> come on now. No, ma'am. Come on. Oh, what you not gonna do? <laughs> yeah. So, an ex NFL linebacker, Kyle Kiero. Boo. Boo, Kyle. Boo. Boo, Kyle. <laughs> boo. Had the audacity, the gall. Right. To get on his little phone and type with his thumb. <laughs> and I quote, <laughs> this Negro said, People are attracted to Jill Scott. And by no means is she ugly, but y'all really sexually aroused by her, huh? Yeah. Kill yourself, wow. sir. Wow. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shut the right. fuck. Right. Oh, Honey, yeah. so y'all know. Y'all already know. Take a, Black like, take a short Twitter. walk off a long pier, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Dragged him. Black Twitter dragged him as they should have. Can we shout it out? Can we give a shout out to Black Twitter? Can we give a shout out? Can we we give them some love? Forever. (laughs) Forever and ever. Yes. But and honey, then they just find out who uh, who shot Meg. I'm not trying to distract. But I'm just saying. Apparently. Then they find out before before the uh, law enforcement (laughs) found out. (laughs) Who shot me? Who, who shot, shot me? Right. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> but then Jill, Jill Scott being the queen that she is, and y'all know we all love her yes. immensely. Mm-hmm. She then says, yeah. wait, I'm trending again? <laughs> and then she says, okay, then. Justice okay. for Brianna the Taylor. Shade. Okay. She goes through and says right. justice for Brianna right. and a few other folks and then says loving ourselves and each other is respectful respectful and uplifting, supportive. Eyes on the prize, Love Village, eyes on the prize. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I hate that this was a black man thinking that he could tear down Jill Scott, like really because she doesn't, you know, okay, I will say this, I will will say this, and I don't care, who listening, I don't care. Tell him. How many times have we seen black men, and I love my brothers, I really do, but how many times have we seen black men Get big, get money, get rich, and then all of a sudden, when you when you a black woman who looks Ma'am. black, you're not attractive, and you got to go out here and get some little That's exotical. Real. That's right. real. Exotical. Now, exotical <laughs> That's real. Love. Listen, exactly. exotical listen. need love too. <laughs> but when these black men act oh, like shit. now because they got coin that they can pull the the J- the J Lo's and they can pull the little you know. West Indian, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the and no shade to these women. It's the shade to the men. Right. Who 100%. The when 100%. you're when you right, when you're not racially ambiguous to them, right. Then you 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 can't get hard because it's Jill Scott. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And you really? know what I also want to You know say, what's crazy to me too though? If if Jill passed him on the street, I bet you she wouldn't look at him. What twice. is don't even know. Right. First of all, let me pull the receipt. He's not even cute. I'm sure she even not. knows his name before so today. Of course. Yeah, pull the receipt. Pull the receipt. And you an ex NFL nigga. Right. You ain't right. got no you money. On trending. Okay. You don't get Thursday deposits no more. Okay. Right. You don't work in NFL. <laughs> That's you don't work in NFL. And I also want to say, while you're pulling up the receipts, that in addition to what um, my good sister Monique said about 
black men all of a sudden forgetting that, you know, Naomi Campbell is the most beautiful woman on earth or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It's also about, and, and I really wanted to, I, I didn't want to jump into the fray because I had a lot going on this week, but it's also about the idea that for some reason, um, people like that who have these, these ideas, they can't imagine that people are attracted to fat women. That's mm -hmm. the other part of it too. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's what, what I think is an even deeper layer to that is like, actually, you know, Jill Scott is the epitome of a beautiful woman, you know, she exactly is her. Epitome. find her attractive. And then whenever these kind of conversations come up about Jill, about Lizzo, about, you know, whoever, whoever. I always have to remind people like, yo, listen, we don't always play to the same rules of beauty or these like standards of Euro beauty that you guys are used That's to. Like, right. yeah. That is like a dot and we all know it. Right. Like, yeah. right. And I know, you know, in, in, I guess he later walked back those comments and said, you know, did. Said, yo, we could go all day about desirability and this and that, but the re the real reality of it is men don't get to police women's bodies or beauty the way that they used to, right? So because of that, then they have to be like, well, I just can't believe you find that attractive. Well, like, you know, you can't believe that? Like, I don't know anybody who say Jill Scott is not desirable, Nobody. you know? So, it don't make no kind honey, of sense. if I was a lesbian, I'll be with her. Exactly. In two point two seconds. Like exactly. Amy already knows. Just got knocked at the door. I, mean, I have to be a lesbian to be exactly. exactly. I'm letting her in. We gonna have and listen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh God. Oh, don't worry. Yes. Okay. Yes. No, for she real. Everything. For real though. I mean, yo, when you turn on, you got me the live version. Like I'm, I'm around. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> You lost his mind. I was like, no. oh, whatever, bro. He I lost his mind. Beautiful. You lost it. You're out of you, here. You're canceled. You're done. Totally done. I can't do it. Well, he's I can't. The, you the BAN of the week, sir. Kyle Kiero. Yep. Yes. So so Ebony, Ebony said, Monique, love it. So real, Carrie. Tell her she is speaking the truth. Um, I think they're talking Thank to you, bro. Black men tearing us down for what? Skinny is not always beautiful. It's what's in the heart. You know what I'm saying? And, and at the end of the day, like, yo, check your fat phobia, fam. Like, just check right. it. Just check up. Nobody asked you. Nobody asked you. Exactly. Nobody even asked you, sir. Exactly. And she's pulling them That's real. hard. Jill is pulling them, okay? Yes. She yo, ain't got no air, no problem in that area. No, You're a little no. dusty behind. Right. I saw his picture. I was like, this dusty. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this nigga dusty. Are you waiting for me? Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that today. Not Giving all the man. love and honor to Jill. And thank all you. the love to Jill. And, and I just want to say real quick, yo, I I, I want to give her so much love and respect, respect for bringing it back to what's relevant. Thank you. Right? Like, fam, we are in the middle of a fucking movement, a pandemic right now that is, is getting... All, all the more attention because of the, the the headlines around police brutality again. And we have an opportunity right now. The energy is there. The momentum is there. And you want to come with this bullshit? And you want... That's yeah, what's on your mind today, so, sir? That's what you're talking mind? about? That is please. All right. on your mind. Honey. Things up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, but you but in, in the, in the vein of... <laughs> <laughs> honey. I can't stand oh, a dusty that? Negro. I just can't. Don't come in here dust. When no dust kickers on, you got dust kickers. Your hairline is oh. trash. Oh, you need to shape up. I'm done. Read him. Read him. What you not going to do, sir? What's a dust kicker, Mo? Huh? A dust kicker. I, I never heard of that. You never heard of a dust kicker? I have not. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's country. That's country. Yeah, dust kickers. A, a dust That's kicker. Country. Is one who wears sneakers that should not, or as I call them, tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. One who should retire dirty old <laughs> tennis I'm shoes. Kicking that. I got you. I got call you. Call them dust kickers. I got you. I got you. <laughs> so I love honey, it, fam. I love it. Honey, that. yes. So shout out to the queen. Shout out to the queen. Shout oh, out to the queen. And honor. since we're actually yes. shouting out queens, let's 
we have to shout out Michelle Obama. She's doing a podcast. A podcast. Yes. 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 Super Love excited for her podcast. It's going to be on Spotify. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. I'm going to listen to that every night before I go to sleep. Same. Every night. <laughs> like, <y'all> every night. <laughs> It is finished. Hold down hope that Michelle Obama is going to run for president. Bless her. Honey. I don't want her to. She not going to. They deserve her. This damn country. That's what I'm saying. They don't deserve her. They don't. Especially like sitting, you know, sitting as a first lady and like seeing the things that that Barack had to, you know, had to be a part of. And I'm just like, you know, sis, you did your part. You you did your part. (laughs) And you are still doing it. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -mm. Y'all don't exactly. deserve her. No. Once you act like you deserve her, then maybe she'll I run. Agree. How about that, America? How about that? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. How about that? How about that? Mm-hmm. How about know, that? You know. So, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, fam, I just want to know those in the comments, if y'all had like anything that you want to share about how you feel about what's going on with the Nikana yes. situation or, you know, when Homeboy came for, I don't even remember his name, when Homeboy came for uh, Jill Scott, like, how do y'all feel about that? How do we continue to protect each other during this time and stay focused on what Thank matters, you. please, Absolutely. and what's relevant? Yes. yes. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Rue. I got some more questions for you. You ready? Hey. <laughs> so I just wanted to know, sis, how does Rue kick, you know, kick back and just chill? What does that look like for you? What do you what do you do that you enjoy doing? Because we get caught up in the work a lot of times. What do you do that you enjoy doing? Well, I always say that I like to smoke good weed and sleep on soft sheets. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> It's in the blood, baby. It's in the blood. I can't. That's what it is. Um, and, and I like to and the soft sheets too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I soft sheets, two layer moisture ritual. Get in the throat. Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mommy won't ever call me dusty. So. <laughs> That's okay. what I love. Never. I like to um, but I like to read. I like to listen to music um and and relax um and what there is kind of this conception and I think I also am a part of the perception that I'm like always working because a lot of times you know like we're doing this right now or I might have been doing whatever earlier but I be chilling okay and I when I'm chilling I like to just chill I like to watch um. Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune every day. Yes. Okay. Yes. Like, I like to do that. Yes, yeah, like, honey. If it's, on, it's on, if it's on the TV, you're like, whatever. Um, so I like to watch that. I like to watch TV. I like to catch up with my family. I'm a we're, I'm a, a very uh, big family person, so always connecting up with them. And I like to just relax. Um, I think that these days, because of the pandemic, I've had to sort of check in with myself more to make sure that I'm like really actually relaxing. Cause sometimes yeah. I'll just be like sitting here and I'm like, okay, am I relaxing? Like, yeah, I, I'm chilling. Don't I look like I'm chilling? Let all the news right. of the day roll off my back and, you know, really get my mind right. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's how I, that's how I like to unwind. And um, I, you know, I, I enjoy a good podcast. I enjoy a good movie. I enjoy, you know, some libations and some herb and some, you know, some friends and connecting with people and things that help to turn my, you know, turn my mind off. Sometimes. Yes. That's really where I focus on. Yeah. That was so that. Sure. Any book that. you read right now? That's awesome. Okay. I just ordered a gang of books because I asked a bunch of people online what they were reading. I was like, what? But you know what? I just finished for the second time. Was it, uh, or maybe the third time? I don't know. It's an old book. Um, a Taste of Power. I just reread mm. Elaine Brown's autobiography. Mm. Again, like what you were saying, Carrie, in the beginning, like if, if this were the 70s or the 60s, you know, I probably would have been a part of a much uh, more radical and more possibly even violent um, mm. political mm. affiliation, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, that's just like the, that's, that's where I come from, the, the yeah. understanding of how to use violence. Even the understanding of violence, even if you yourself are not committing violence, but mm. understanding violence as a method of resistance and organizing is so important because you have to know that if 
Martin Luther King had to put those black people in church suits and dresses and set them at the counter. And then the next thing you see on the news are the fire hoses and the dogs mm. the people in church suits. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. The importance of that kind of violence being presented as a part of why right. we uprise, right? right. So, mm -hmm. um, I've been studying right. some of the old grades, so I reread A Taste of Power um, because I, I just think it's so important um, to read and understand the other side of like Angela Davis as a Black Panther, Elaine Brown as a Black Panther after Angela was pushed out. Yeah. I also just recently reread mm. Tula by Toni Morrison. Mm. Because mm. Tula, yes. you know, Sula is what happens when um, you know, a black woman is not actualized, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And Sula, the spirit of Sula is what happens when we are not allowed to be our most divine, open, sexual selves. Mm -hmm. and so um, I reread that and I just ordered, um, well, I just ordered this book called Educated, which I was told was like, one that I should just read and check out. I've heard good things about it. Me too, and I, but I haven't, so I'm waiting for that to come. But then the book that I have that I've just sort of been like reading and then putting down and reading, putting down is um, The Color of Law. Yes. Okay. So it's that. not, it's not like heavy, like heavy. It's heavy. Yeah, I got to get into it, but it, it, it yeah. is pretty heavy. I think like, that whole book is like, girl. leave on the table, <laughs> you read, come, put it down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, when I'm trying to get mad and I'm like, let me make sure I got my anecdote. Right. <laughs> let, me do, let me do my bibliography together. Like, right. you know, yeah. I'll go, I'll go to the library. Yes. I'll, I'll go to my bookshelf over here quick. Like, let me go through the lab, see what I got. You right. Know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's definitely right. something I keep um keep on deck for sure. That's I love that. Up. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Um so what about some, oh, go ahead, sis. No, ahead. I, I was just gonna say, I have a question. So we talk, we're talking about books now, let's talk about music. Who are you listening to now? Boom. Okay, yes. so. Who you died into? I have been listening to the Tiana Taylor album, the album. Ooh, okay. Uh -huh. and yes, I love Tiana Taylor. I do too, I love yes. her. Love I her. Love I, her. Really cool. I gotta so listen to it. Style. Mm -hmm. she, um, borrows heavily from yes. people who I love so much, like Janet Jackson. Yes. And, mm -hmm. You know, so, and, and Total, even on this, mm -hmm. you'll, hear, you'll hear that. So, there's some yes, real great songs on the on that new one um, that I really like. So, I like her new joint. And then I also have a really fly reggae playlist that I play for myself. Ooh, and my yes. When I'm like feeling it. Yes, you know, honey. <laughs> yes. That's so, great. Um, mm -hmm. And then who else? Oh, let me just look on my Apple Music because I'll be having jams, okay? Honey, <laughs> I believe. I'll be having jams. I'll be having some jams. And I'll be like, listen, everybody needs to turn this on and listen to and it. And listen to um, this. Also, okay, what I also have been listening mm -hmm. to is um, the Summer Walker just put out an EP. I like Summer Walker. I like Summer Walker too because it's, it's that mm -hmm. time. I, I like listening to stuff mm -hmm. that makes me hot. You know, yes, like, yes. Makes me feel right. like deeply. You know, that makes me yes. feel like I don't know. I've, I've been in, in kind of a yeah mood lately, so I've been listening to some kind of very slinky project, oh if you will. Hey, <laughs> yeah. come on, slinky! Like right. Come on, slinky! <laughs> come on, slinky! I love it. <laughs> I love, love it. it. I know you played Masego earlier too. Yes, that's my dude. He is just come on. I want to work with him. I want to work with him one day. I'm speaking. putting it out. Yes, I'm speaking. It. I've been speaking. So I want to work with him. Him and Sade. They on it. They coming. <sighs> we know, sis. We right. right. <laughs> Just like Ruth, I just like you know, I'm gonna be working with Anderson Pop in the future. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I had to talk to him about that for a minute now. Yeah, I can totally see that, Carrie. I can happen. totally see it, yeah. honey. Yes. Yeah. Me too. Absolutely, I could one hundred percent see that. And we we talked about it because Anderson and I are friends. Um, we Ooh. were just like that. Yeah, like a, a friend of mine. I just got introduced to him from someone else, and whenever he comes to town, you know, we get to see his shows and stuff. And he's just yeah, I could one hundred percent see that happen. Absolutely, don't happen. Ooh, don't happen. I ain't stressed. Oh, I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> when I knew y'all was connected, I was like, oh, the universe is speaking. <laughs> 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 All together. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. Somebody yeah. asked where you were living right now, Rue, and I just wanted to say you right here in. I'm in Denver. So it's funny oh, no. because I don't know who asked that question, but um, so many people will be like, well, I never know if you're here or if you're there. Because I always try to explain, like, I am, you know, I like, like think of me 
as an existence, not necessarily where I am. Because right. there was a time, particularly back right here, yeah. where I was, yes, that's the truth. I uh, was putting my time between Denver and DC. So sometimes I would like be in DC, but I would be running point on a project in Denver. Or like right now I'm in Denver, but I'm running pro point on projects in, in DC. So um, I'm here in Denver now. I've been sheltering in place here. And I, um, I, I think that some of my projects would probably prefer that I was on the East Coast, but I am living in Denver um, and not going anywhere anytime soon. But, you know, always the East Coast um, and LA always, you know, have my heart, but I am right here. Um, in the city of Denver and so happy to be here because I really, really love it here. Yes. So, We're going to have to do like a luncheon, like a sip. Yes. You know, meet up. Like, yeah, I would we love to do this. that. We should do a meet up it. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can yeah. figure out like a women's conference or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 100 prophesies. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. Let's do it. Absolutely. Mo, can you put uh, Jasmine on the screen? Absolutely, our I girl want to give a Shout out to our Jamaican sister, Jazz. <laughs> 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 Hey, Daddy. I love that. Talking about the, the, the existence. You are, we are a force. That's it. Come yes. I'm going to give you love out there in Jersey, That's sis. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I know that in your bio, Rue, you were talking about your work in cannabis equity. And I, I, wanted, I wanted to know if you could talk about that just a little bit um, and, and, and jump into that. Raj, I wasn't sure. Do you, do you have the balance yet? Right. Um, just about, but I'm good. I'm good. Okay, just double checking. Just double checking. So yeah, um, I wanted to know more about your work yeah. in cannabis equity. Dope. Okay, so <clears throat> um, I, I I have my my work strategy across all my projects. Um, I call it the formula, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that I can work within any topic um and and it doesn't matter whether you are running a social equity campaign for cannabis or you are trying to put out an album or if you're trying to get people to come to your bachata class right mm -hmm. if you have a formula you know how to organize with people where they are and take them to the next level so my cannabis work is essentially stationed around the same idea of giving voices to the voiceless or at least the lower you know maybe our voices were a little bit lower so Obviously, black and brown people are more affected by the war on drugs than anyone else, right? Like our cousins were getting arrested in the 90s for having like $10 worth of weed. Right. So they can't get jobs to this day because of it, right? Right. right. And then, you know, meanwhile, we have, you know, mm -hmm. Meredith and all these other like, you know, and Sarah and Becky and all these girls who do like weed yoga and shit. Weed and yoga. <laughs> right. So and, and, and it's weed a part yoga. of the so that, that is an example of how there is no equity within the cannabis industry. Right. So what we work to do mm -hmm. through our work, um, our sister company is called The Working Group in LA. We work with social equity applicants so that they can receive licenses to work in the cannabis industry. What mm -hmm. that basically means is kind of a, a head and policy way of essentially saying, if you are black or brown, you deserve first access to a certain amount of these cannabis licenses if you live in areas that were affected by the war on drugs, right? Period. Right. That makes the most right. Right. So like Rashad and That's Rodney, a and all of them are getting thrown in yeah. jail in the Bay and all of that. They are they deserve to be able to work in cannabis mm -hmm. in their communities, yes. in communities where they were persecuted before. Or and then later prosecuted, they deserve to work in their communities within cannabis because you know that the plant has a wellness and holistic approach to it, and it should not just be rich white men, a rich, you know, straight, able bodied white men who have access to those dollars. Yeah, so, what we do is create campaigns that give access to people who deserve it. Now, Denver is a little different, right? Because it's just sort of building its social equity program, but we're coming for that too because. Mm -hmm. People don't really think yes. of Denver as a place that's like, you know, war on drugs. You don't necessarily think about that. But the federal government was putting the smack down on everybody across right. the board. Right. So, you know, we're building <laughs> avenues that allow um, for licenses to go to black and brown people who want to work in their communities, make money in their communities, and they want to make a difference with cannabis. Yeah. Wow. I mean, a lot of people don't even know that right here in Denver, from my that's understanding... I was just gonna say, there's only there's only two black owned dispensaries. There might be some people that like grow, wow. but there's only two black owned dispensaries in the entire city. 
You know what I'm saying? Preposterous. And I know, and one of them, that's crazy. I know Wanda. I worked for Wanda. You know, Wanda's my girl. um, And and she has, and her and her her husband, Scott Dura, um, they're legends. You know, they're LA weed legends and, you know, restaurateurs and black business people and Mm -hmm. very, very successful. And so even they have a struggle with making things happen. And it's like, okay, if they have like the capital and the clout and the name, and even they have a hard time getting around some of these issues, yeah. then you know that, you know, right. in class, whoever is going to have as, a, as much of a struggle too. And it doesn't have to be this way. Right. Um, it shouldn't be this way. Right. And, and we want to bring light to that so that we can make a difference. And it works really well because cannabis and the music industry, you know, they're, they're first cousins, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. right, right. Mm-hmm. People crap shows and we work um, within cannabis. They work very, very closely together. And the same kind of access is needed for both industries, I think. Absolutely. What was your question, Raj? I'm sorry. I was, I was just wondering from Rue, like, do you know if, because I know that the Trump administration has been trying to roll back a lot of um, the uh, the access and the laws and things like that. And I don't know if that affects uh, communities on a local level yet, because like, obviously it's not affecting Denver and I don't know how successful they have been, but have you noticed that with the new administration and there's another level of ch- challenge that you have around your equity work for people of color in terms of getting them certificates and uh, licenses and stuff like that. One, fuck them. Two, <laughs> 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 you know, okay. it's important to know. It's important to make sure that we say that first and foremost. Um, but you're right. You're yes, right. Yes. Yes. First and foremost, fuck them. But you're right. You know, there we we do see that the federal government, as they roll back their some of their laws and they try to continually be more conservative, we see that there are issues in banking. Um, that's a really big issue because the, yes. the federal government, you know, um, obviously, so our, on on a state level, you can do whatever you want. But if the feds swoop in, right. that's it, right? So what we have to right. do is make sure that the kind of industry is like positioned enough to also help the local government in such a way that the local government will not allow the feds mm-hmm. to swoop in. But we have seen that issue particularly around um, real estate and banking and other things mm. that we call like American dollars. That's why you see dispensaries that have like armed security guards out in front wow. of you. You know, they, right. it's a cash business. You know what I'm saying? So right. um, when it, but, but as soon as they figure out how to get that federal income tax figured out and sorted, they're going to because they, they want that cash. They want that yeah. coin. Yep. And, and you they know, want that money. Exactly. Is, uh, exactly. What I think about like when Denver was the first city in the country um, to start selling it recreationally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, didn't they break federal and state law to do that? Mm. And so sometimes, sometimes I think like, um, cause yeah. I, I completely understand what you're saying, but sometimes I feel like we forget, especially in home rule cities like Denver, we actually, there's so much power right here at the municipal level, um, that put us in positions where we can yes. just like, fuck y'all federal government. Like, this right. Is you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I didn't know if you knew more right. about that, but I did remember that, um, I just wanted to. The other part of that that's important on a federal level too, is that. Um, black and brown people are actually still going to jail for weed. Yes. So that's the that part. That part. You know, that that's yes. kind of the part that makes what it so difficult. Is like, yeah. it's like legalized and on a state level, but the feds still want you to actually go to jail. They like want you to like actually go to jail. So and, okay. and we're still seeing the numbers. We're still seeing that black and brown men in particular are going to jail over cannabis and 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 there's nothing that you know the state laws can really do about that so it is we, we have to decriminalize um on a federal level at some point i mean it's Absolutely. gotta have it and that's why everyone's asking like yeah. joe biden and you know bernie sanders right. like what they think about that because mm-hmm. someone at some point has to do but something see, but see if you decriminalize it if you decriminalize it and you release all those voting members from prison then that. that's going to affect your local yeah. and state and federal governments. Correct. And so, okay. of course, you're not going to want to let these folks go. Of course. We're you're seeing making seeing money off of them. In Florida, Governor um, DeSantis, they just they, they had announced, I think maybe two or three years ago, that if you were a formerly incarcerated person, that you could have your voting privileges restored. Okay. So now that. they are saying that in order to have your voting privileges restored and be able to actually vote, you have to pay restitution to the courts. 
before you're allowed to vote. And you know, that ain't nothing but a poll. You know 100%. 100%. That is, it sure is a poll tax. Yep. Come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So it's just, it's very complicated. And, you know, there's a lot of pieces that go into it that, you know, the activism has to continue. Absolutely. Right. Right. Absolutely. And if people were smart about actually really wanting to make money, the first people that you would be employing in this business are the are the people that have been doing it for fucking years. Right. That's, it's only logical. Right. right? Like, yeah. why do you have to retrain right. and like, yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense. You're investing all of this time and energy. Um, right. Um, right. And right. Right. You right. have this brilliance. And obviously right. that's how you know it's rooted in racism. Yeah. You know, right. Like, that's how you can tell because you have all of this brilliance right here telling you like, I already know the game. I already know the hustle. I already know the business. You know, I got you. I know how to grow. I got, I got it all. Right. Got it all. You, you overlook that to support yeah. white people and white men, specifically white able-bodied men in positions of power. So, Absolutely. Right? You're right. Yep. With all of that. With all of that. That's real. That's real. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the last the last thing that I wanted to um, to ask you, sis, was what are you doing right now? Like, what's some of your current work that you're really excited about and how can we support you throughout your processes? Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I am... So excited about defunding our local police. Yes. Uh, and I'm I'm in addition to the excitement around that actually happening. I'm excited about the amount of you know political education work that's happening. Um, with Carrie Joy and I are working on this project, demystify the technique, which is you know a throw to being able to just pull the you know pull the wool over from over our eyes about how city governments work. And I think that's important because we need to know who governs us and how they govern us. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I'm also really excited about um, some of this diversity and inclusion work um, that I've been doing because I've really been able to have real conversations with agencies and organizations that want to affect change and they want to do it on a level that's not just like pandering or tokenism. So right. um, I am a board member. I'm on the board of directors at the Minority Cannabis Business Association. So I would love for y'all to check that out and continue to watch what we're doing around writing some of this specific drug policy because it is going to affect all of us. And, and when the music industry comes back, we're gonna be producing more big shows and festivals and we want people to be able to come to them and consume you know, yes. quickly and happily and enjoy it. And so I'm really excited about that. And um, building, I'm also building like a curriculum, so to speak, of that, we're hoping AEG is going to implement to bring more black and brown youth through the pipeline to work in the music industry. So oh. that is, I'm like, that's like so new. I don't even know if I should talk about it yet, but I just did. So but listen, hold them accountable. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, really the youth, like, and by youth, it's like, you know, I'm 36. So sometimes I don't even know like what these kids are doing, but they have so many great ideas mm -hmm. and it's time for us to give them an opportunity and to show them that they deserve an opportunity to make it. So I'm just creating programs that are going to continue to allow uh, this work to grow. And I would love the support of all of you just by being there and knowing about it. And if there's anything that I can do to support, you know, your music dreams or your artistic dreams, please let me know. Cause you know, I, I, I got a little bit of knowledge around that kind of thing. So I, I like to try to make things happen where we can. And that is what I'm most excited about is continuing to raise the voices of people who I know are doing the work. And I know that that's y'all. So. Thank, oh, thank you. I thank love you. That. What's the oh, name of that board again? So I can uh, make sure people can stay tuned. Minority Cannabis Business Association. Yes. Got you. Thank yep. You. Okay. Check yes. it out. And, and yeah, I'm on Instagram talking smack, taking photos of my coffee and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. Any, that was <laughs> anywhere else that you would like people to follow you? Um, I think Instagram is good. I've been talking a little crazy on Twitter sometimes, so I don't know. You can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready. Uh, <laughs> person, Drew, are you on Twitter? And um, yeah, I'm around, you know. I'm out here, so please, you know, reach out and and let's let's connect and stay connected. Love it. Yes, yes. family. Yes. So, thank you so much for being on here and blessing thank us today. You. So much wisdom, so, so many much. gems that you have dropped, fam. And I will see you in a few minutes. <laughs> yes, I'm out to go. Let's do this. Need this and come over there for production uh, at seven thirty. All right, perfect. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> Very soon. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So so thank you for being here. Thank you. I, you, I, 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 you too. Awesome. Guys, make, absolutely. Guys, y'all make sure y'all please head over to Instagram and support our girl, Rue Johnson. I'm sure everybody tuned in. So we had so many views today and I hope you got some gems and some wisdom and you know, you can take this into the weekend into your next week. And thank you again, Rue, for being here. You are our sister in power. We yes. Give it up, Give it up. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I can't wait until we can all get together and spend some much needed time together. Good. Yo, awesome. hey, if y'all are listening, y'all want to sit podcast, um, you know, retreat of some sort, just give us some love, man. Like, get some people to follow. Let us yes. know. Absolutely. Yeah. At Hey Girl at the yes. You can always continue to follow us right here at the Sip Podcast on Facebook or on Instagram with the Sip underscore podcast. So check us out, y'all. We'll Absolutely. Next week. Yes. Same time, same place. Who we got next week, fam? We got Latoya Renee. All the way from South Carolina. Yes. Incredible jazz vocalist, educator. Just, she's super dope. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, next week. Come through. Yes. And Raj, go kill it on your gig, y'all. Kill it Come on your gig. Good work, baby. Thank you, sis. Thank y'all. <laughs> All right, Y'all have a beautiful weekend. Peace. Peace. Peace.